Hello and welcome to this demonstration where I'm going to be painting out on location. We're uh, in France, rural France, and I'm going to have a go at painting some hay bales. So this is the scene we're going to paint. But, uh, we've got um, you know, a tree there that's quite useful and a nice big hay bale there that uh, may not include that tree, we'll see. There are some houses off in the distance, but I'm just going to make it about, um, about the hay bales. So this is how I'm traveling with my uh, art gear today. So I've done a lot of watercolor painting on this bicycle, but um, I'm taking it out with some oils today. That I shall need to make a, a carrier for uh, the back of it to carry the panel, but I've just attached it to the tripod and uh, it's just sticking there. So hopefully uh, that will travel home okay. So I've got a basket in the front to carry the camera equipment and the panniers for the uh, tripod, etc., for cameras as well. And it is an electric bike, so it gets me up the hill okay. So I shall get um, set up. That um, this is kind of the lightest weight I found. Basically, just a piece of hardboard attached to a tripod, and I've actually just screwed this canvas panel or canvas stretched canvas to the panel here. So we'll give that a go. But uh, all the um, sort of wooden type easels are very heavy, which is fine if I'm travelling in the camper van. But um, you know, if I'm going to go off on my bike, I want lightweight. Right, I don't really want the sunshine on the panel, so let's let's come back here so it's um, not in the sun. So that will work okay. Um, I'm going to attach this here because maybe I'll mix colours on there so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Plein air is difficult enough as it is. But to add uh, filming in, it's another level. I don't know where that went. So I'll have a, a palette here as well, so uh, I shall try and show you what I'm mixing as, while I'm painting. Some brushes, some paints, obviously. Uh, I'm not very organized today. I normally have a little tray that sits there to hold a lot of this stuff, but uh, I shall just have to manage. So I've got a couple of... Um, little clip jar there so it's got turpentine and linseed oil in there so we'll get some paint out and I've forgotten white we do a lot without white <clears throat> luckily I don't live very far away but I will take the camera with me Luckily, like I said, I didn't live, don't live right just over the road there, so uh, I managed to go back and get my uh, bit of wood that holds things and some white paint. I'm going to need that. So, outdoor painting is another thing. Nightmare. <clears throat> so it's uh, not easy outdoor painting. All the uh, palaver of getting ready and. Uh, by the time I find myself, I get ready to paint, I'm exhausted. But um, being organised, that's the key. Which I wasn't particularly organised. It was kind of a spare the moment thing. The weather's due to change tomorrow, so I wanted to get out and do a bit of painting. So I've got um, just any white, some yellow, an earthy yellow, some lasagne crimson. So the earthy yellow is a yellow ochre deep, Michael Harding, and Michael Harding yellow lake. That's the first one. Uh, we'll go for a bit of cobalt blue. Let's have all the colours out, shall we? A bit of ceruleum. That's a Windsor and Newton, that one. These are all artist quality paints. And a bit of ultramarine blue. And we'll have a bit of, I don't often use greens, but um, let's use a bit of sap green. And some burnt umber will be useful. So, might need a bit more paint, but we'll start with that. I'll take the lids off of those for the moment. I don't think they're all quite runny, so I don't think we will need any linseed oil, but... 
I'll start with this um, hog hair brush to, to draw the scene out. So I'll use a little bit of turpentine. I don't mind using turpentine when I'm uh, outdoors. Doesn't uh, smell so much then. So need to think about the composition. So I think less sky, more grass. And uh, the sun's going down, so by the time I've drawn this out, maybe the light will become a bit warmer, maybe. So I think that hedgerow will be quite useful as a bit of a bit of a stop. Um, bring that up here a little bit. And I'll have a bit of a slope. And then we've got distant fields. Maybe trees off in the distance there. And there's a zigzag. And a Z taking us up the scene, that's quite useful. And obviously the hay bale. So that's going to be. See, we've got bring that down a little bit, I think. So there's our hedge row there, so nice big hay bale there maybe. Let's try that. And then we've got one off there, another one so that falling off down there, that's a bit of drama maybe, so maybe make that one smaller and then we're going to have another one over that hill, maybe just overlap that one maybe, not quite useful. So we've got shadows all across here, and maybe we'll throw a shadow, an imaginary shadow, which is kind of in front of me here. Yeah. Kind of just got to go for it really, but uh, come up with an idea, and maybe we'll just have a branch or two, that tree. As a stop. So there's my composition. Let's have a go at um, painting it. I'll put the lid back on the turpentine. I'm not going to need that anymore. And I don't think we'll need the linseed oil either, so no point risk spillage or carrying extra weight. So I'll start with the sky, which is very blue at the top and I paint loose in the studio out here we've got to keep it even looser because you know, there's all sorts of things can go wrong out here bugs light changing forgetting your materials so you don't want to be hanging about so we've got some wispy clouds coming across here now I'm just taking inspiration from what's, what I'm seeing. And it's very blue at the top, but when it comes down to um, the bottom here, it's uh, nowhere near as much blue in there. This is how I'm kind of, I can't really sort of show you this and the panel. If I zoom out to get it all in, we lose a bit of um, quality of filming on here. So I shall try to remember to mix on there. So you can see what I'm doing. So maybe just if I just do a touch of yellow ochre, just to take away some of the white, and I've got some blue on that brush as well. So you know that's giving me the uh, the colour of the the distant sky there. So. Rolling that brush around just like I do in the studio, and all that um, painting in the studio, you know, it all pays dividends when you go outdoors here. And you have a you know, more confidence and an idea of what to, to do.
to do. So I'll keep that brush there for the sky in case I need to do any touching up. So we've got the distant blue fields. So it's kind of green, but I'm going to steer it towards a cool blue and tonal value, all important. Uh, so lighter in tone. So if I go too dark with it, I'll have nowhere to go. So we can exaggerate, know that that's far away, that um, distant lot of trees. And I'll leave the house out, I can see in the distance for the moment. And you know, we can always make a decision to put that in if we, if we want to. And with these sort of outdoor paintings, you know, I only intend to just capture something here that um, will go for the, the green field. But um, maybe I'll warm it up a little bit. I know when that sun goes down, we're going to get some nice warm colours. So let's preempt that a little bit. There's a distant field, soft edges in the, the background there. There's a bit of a darker edge. Along the, uh, the base there. You know, but that, that can be the, the mark, you know, just like that, just enough. And there's my hedgerow coming down here. There's a bit of light on there. Just go for capturing the, you know, when you see something, you know, just put it in. So we can just about see the, the road as it comes down there. That's as much as we need to put in. So back to the green. So again, yellow, blue. So I've left out a lot of these trees here that um, I think they'll cause me problems. So let's just go for a simple landscape with hay bales in. And then maybe I'll put a tree in, but we'll see, see how it goes. So I don't want to chase the light, but if it does change dramatically, I might have a go at uh, warming it up. But uh, that's that field off in the distance, but again, simply often works best. So let's just probably will need to have a tree in there somewhere. So let's have a go with these hay bales. So this yellow deep Michael Harding paint that probably will go quite well with a bit of yellow. And if you want to test your colours, you know, I can squint with one eye and just hold the brush out. You know, that uh, works quite well. So this is catching the light. And along the top there. I made that possibly a little bit too long. Let's make that the front, more of the front. And these ones off in the distance are a little bit less saturated. That one uh, is 
also catching the light there. So you've got to work quick when you're outdoors painting. So again, I'll save that brush for the lighter areas. So this one may be the, the darker area of the hay bale, which is same, yellow, but it's much darker in tone towards the base. So directional brush marks. And again, I'm looking to cover the canvas and then I shall come back in and uh, finesse. Don't need detail just yet. So I can see some blue on that table as it's in shadow. Let's get the foreground grass area in. So, I'm going to need to put some more paint out, I think. Lighter off in the distance there. And these aren't special brushes for it on plein air, these are just cheap brushes. But, uh, at the end of the day, it's just something to make a mark. No. And I've kind of got these sort of cheaper brushes because you know, when I'm out in the camper van, you know, I could be out for a couple of weeks and, and I could end up with dry paint on the brush and I don't want to spoil good brushes. So, get some different greens in here. Edge row there. More yellow. So you can always <coughs> mix on the panel. Okay, this is actually a canvas. <coughs> so there are kind of almost directional lines I can see. Let's go for making it interesting, even warm it up with a bit of red. We've walked this way most evenings and you know, it's been some quite spectacular light, which has kind of drawn me to come out here, but uh, a bit of, bit of cloud today, so. So nice and dark in the foreground, always tend to do that on watercolour and oils, you know, it just makes it seem it's closer to you. And you'll find if you paint outdoors on location, you know, all this brush work where you're kind of working nice and quick, it all adds <coughs> something to your paintings and your outdoor paintings will look different to your uh, paintings done on location. So, dark along the base there, and that shadow there, that takes us off there, it comes down there more. We'll get that dark of that tree in. And just suggest a few of those branches. I haven't got time to be doing, you know, fiddly stuff with branches and so on. So that could be, could be it. Uh, 
time in the studio to work on it again if you need to correct any odd shapes but to be fair I very rarely do work on these scenes again because they lose their freshness so a bit of warmth on the side of the tree as the, the light is hitting it I think we are going to need a tree here um, but let's just get some more paint on these hay bales so real bit of warmth on there so this is kind of now thinking to what it's like when I walked down here the other evening the warmth was uh, on the hay bale there I don't know if we get this hay belt looking good. The other ones aren't that important. We'll go with that. That's a little bit too dark, that one. So let's just lighten it up a little bit. Now I think I will go put, I need to put some trees in because it needs, I can see some blue there. A bit more now, I just caught a bit of red, I can see there. And that's maybe got some red in there as well. The, the light is changing, but uh, I can now start to see tufts of red in the, the foreground here. So let's get that in while the, while the inspiration is there. It's catching that fence. So that's what happens when the sun starts to go down. Everything just gets flooded with colour. So let's go for a tree off in the distance. Dark here, so a bit of yellow, a bit of blue. That's a green, touch of red just to take away some of that green there. So think about where you position your trees, that um, if we have a tree next to there, that's gonna sharpen that up and you know, make that look good. So I'm not going to do detailed trees, just a suggestion of the shape of that tree off in the distance and maybe that other one slightly smaller there and we'll put an imaginary one there which will act as a stop. And that one will bring right up into the sky. These are oak trees, there's a lot of oak trees in this area. But, um, it wasn't that long ago, they were actually, um, not in my lifetime, but they were actually wolves in this area. But, uh, very wooded area, I think it was. So that's fine for that distant tree, maybe. We could suggest that house off in the distance. But, uh, that's our neighbour there. Let's just, but that's it. Just a suggestion of a rooftop. Just adds a little bit of interest into the scene. And need to get fiddly with it. So light catching on some of those trees off in the distance. A chance for a bit of warmth on that tree. As you know, it's light and warmth all over here, so I can see some just catching on those trees there. That's enough. He says, go for a bit of warmth in this grass area. So 
Uh, these are very good, these Mar Michael Harding paints, you know, very highly pigmented, which, you know, is what you want when you're outdoors painting because you don't want to be messing about. But, uh, they're a bit evenly spaced, those are, really. So we could do perhaps putting another one in. The round one. There. It's better. Greens. So this is just creating a bit of texture in that grass area. And we'll have this in shadow down over here. So I think we can make slightly more of this one as well by having those trees in the uh, the distance as well. So we've got nice dark. So position your darks carefully. And that's that row of trees going off there. And kind of sharpens that bank there and connection again to all that. Step back from it, but uh, quite a slope there. So let's change it now. So some light catching on this hedgerow. I do really like to get connection throughout the painting, so all this stuff here is a chance to connect the tree here to this grass area. This grass area connects to this hay bale and another little lead in here. And it's just grass sticking up in all sorts of directions. So maybe just a few longer bits of grass. And maybe just a few tufts there. So I can see some light off in the distance, so let's go for trying to suggest that. So there's light across there. We'll carry that through. I say the what I'm painting here is very different to what's actually there. But I'm just taking inspiration from, from it really. So, Green. Let's sort out um this hay bale a bit, a bit too blue that is, so kind of quite dark there. Dark green down here, more towards yellowy brown. So 
platinum highlights really. So got some a little bit of a clean yellow there, a bit of that uh, yellow deep, nice blob of white. So we've got some highlights across the top. And you know, we've got quite a bit of paint on here now, so it is a case of just lay that paint on. Don't fiddle with it. It's more orangey on the front here. So almost a bit in pasto this is. So trying to suggest that texture with a few stray strands. in the light on that one. That one probably would also be receiving quite a bit of light. But at the end of the day you could just keep going forever in a day. You know you've got to stop at some point keep seeing stuff that so you can actually see a bit of a shine and I think they must wrap these in some kind of plastic because it's got a bit of a shine there. You can see some darker tones in there. So I think these are all a bit similar. So I could bring that tree up a bit and if I kind of need to finish it now rather than think I'll work on it again in the studio because I know I won't. So plenty of sky holes, bigger tree. Darker over this side. It's better, it doesn't compete so much with that one now. I didn't use my sap green after all. So let's try and get that curve of that looking good. Again, you need the darks to make it light. bluey kind of shadow field off in the distance there so let's have a go at putting that in and I can tidy up that as well. Bring that tree up there a little bit, keep us in the, the scene. Just a little thing like that can just stop your eye wandering off. Let's have a go, I brought this sap green with me. Let's Put it in some darker areas here and give it a bit more punch. That shadow, and maybe one across there, maybe. It's a green painting, but it uh, can be interesting still. So these are just shadows here, and just an excuse to use that uh, sap green. I've got to wipe it off in a moment otherwise. So if I look really carefully, I can see you know, there are some purples here in the foreground right in front of me. So if you really look as the light is changing. 
yellows, need a bit more white. That bit of light coming across there and up the tree there. And there's some long bits of grass, I can see. And as the light changes, you do see different stuff. So it's not a good idea to chase the light, but you know, sometimes you're just enjoying painting. So you just keep going just to see what, to, what we can make of it. The field has been cut, there's lots of hay that's kind of strewn all over the, the grass area here. So that's kind of what's picking up that pink. Lead in there. Some darker branches. Which will just give it a little bit more punch. And connect up as well this tree to down here. Stuff in this tree, some leaves and whatever else, it all just gives a chance to put some warmth into this. Just these little finishing touches that can kind of bring it together. A few bits of detail. See that the light is really changing now. It's difficult not to fall for the trap of chasing it, but there's some lovely warmth on these trees here now. Best call it a day. Maybe a few darks in here. I keep saying I'm going to call it a day, but uh, there we go. We'll call that done. So I didn't really use that really, but uh, I shall give it some thought. But I think maybe just holding up the palette in front of the painting worked okay. So let's pop it in the sunlight so we can actually see it a bit better. So where possible I do try and paint in the shade um, because if I was painting in the bright sunlight it would be very difficult to see these colours. Um, so it is better to get in the shade or have an umbrella. So hopefully you enjoyed this painting on location that I will be doing a bit more of this um, if the weather improves. We've had a lot of rain in France um, this year so I've not had a chance to get out indoors and paint. So hit the like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, if you're watching this on Patreon, thanks for being a patron, I really appreciate it. So now I've got the uh, task to pack up and uh, cycle home, which luckily is not that far. <laughs>